So is there anybody that you can think of that we need to talk to tonight? Is there a name that comes to mind? I mean, I can't tell you anybody that I'm overly suspicious of <coughs> off the top of my head. Okay. You know, um, I mean, this is such a stupid thing. I'm even embarrassed to say it, but it just didn't make any sense. I just hired a guy out here mm -hmm. and he really he wasn't cutting the mustard, but I hadn't told him this yet. Paul's been working with him a lot. He killed the sunflower seeds in our dove field just recently, which is why Paul was here doing this. He told Paul a story the other day about how when he was in high school, he got in a fight with some black guys. And the FBI undercover team observed him fighting those guys and put him on an undercover team with three Navy SEALs. And that their job was to kill radical black panthers. And they did that from Myrtle Beach to Savannah. Now, I really don't think this guy, you know, mm -hmm. is probably the person, but that's just so freaking. Yeah, that's kind of far fetched story. It's weird. But he was off today. Okay. He took his daddy to the doctor. What's his name? C.B. Rowe. All right, Chase, what do you got? Right at the beginning of this clip, you can see him try to adjust himself to look more comfortable and more relaxed. The moment he does this, you're going to see his body completely disagree with him. It's going to move his hand back almost just without his consent to protect the groin and the femoral artery here. And do you know what other emotion that would be coming up here that's missing is anger? anger would be present here and he's got a huge problem identifying a perpetrator here who did this and he wants to keep the ambiguity as high as possible and i don't think there's any desire whatsoever for them to find for him to get them to find the person that did this and just pay close attention to what is not being said here and i think in my opinion you might hear a murderer talking if you just listen to what's not being said and what's being ignored. Greg? Yeah, there's no anger. There's no rush. There's no urgency. None of that. As a matter of fact, listen to the cadence of his storytelling slow down. Slow down. This is, what has it been, 30 minutes of him sitting in a car? I would be looking for help. He gives in to you know. There's a new word, a new phrase he's injecting that indicates he's comfortable and thinking and talking. And that's his filler words starting to come out. He doesn't, it's not scram, it's not scrambled, it's not compressed. None of that's going on. There's more concern in the cop's brow and in the guy in the back seat than there isn't his. This is his family. There's that zygomatic muscle again that we said makes your face want to smile. It sure looks like he's almost smiling when he's telling that story. Well, we know that earlier. What the study said was if your frontalis muscle was down in, in sadness and that, that was probably an indicator. He also starts to turtle. Chase, after he goes back and he gets forced into that position, then he shrinks a bit. And we say turtling, your head and your torso shrink and make your target smaller. This cadence is unlike anything else we've heard. I think it's because he has already been rehearsing this story and he knows what he's going to say. This guy who told me this story and... Well, if, you, if you're trying to figure out who to point somebody to, then you'd have a lot of details. When I would just say, hey, there's a guy who works for me. He's a little shady. Maybe you want to go check him, if that were the case. I don't think that's the case. And this is the first time, the single first time, he's used his right hand to illustrate anything when he's talking about this guy. Uh, it's been at his groin, as I call it, protecting the precious this entire time. That's another red flag. Scott, what do you got? All right. Now he's trying to put the suspicion on somebody else. He brings in this other guy that, that worked for him, that he just hired, that isn't working out. And again, we're not seeing, like you were saying, Greg, we're not seeing things we should be seeing in here. We're not seeing the emotions someone goes through as they relive this experience of what just happened, the most horrible things ever happened to him. We don't see that uncontrol uncontrollable sobbing, no wailing and crying, nothing. We don't even see one tear. And he has, and, and I've been looking. 
Nothing. We don't see, he doesn't tear up. There's nothing in there. There's no tears at all. We don't see that detachment you'll see from when someone goes through something that bad. Why, no, why did this happen? Going back to that and talking about how good they were. He's not talking about the things, oh, oh, he loved this or she loved, he, she talked about the dogs earlier, but he didn't really focus on that. He'd be talking about how the, the things that he thought of her and what they reminded, what this reminded him of her. She liked to do this and he loved to do that. That's what he would talk about a lot, especially with this amount of time going by in an interview like this. I didn't hear where that usually happens, especially when you're the first, you got him in the car and you're the first ones talking to him. That's what you see in here. There's none of that. None of that. None of that's happening. He should be distraught. <laughs> this guy's not distraught. He sounds like he's talking about some things that, you know, like when we tell stories, it sounds like he's talking about something that happened last week. Guess what happened last week? This. And then going through it, he just gives this list of, of things and never tears up. Doesn't use his, his Kleenex either. Nothing's looking the way it should look. I keep going back to that, but that's I think that's the most important thing here. Nothing looks as it should look up to now. All right, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, this is a beautiful scene. You can't even write this stuff. It's, it's, it's genius. The, uh, the officer says, look, is there anybody that we should be looking at? And while he says that, he covers his mouth because he knows, I think, that he's looking at the perpetrator right now so he's even blocking himself to the to the lie of the question that he's asking there this guy comes up with an amazing story it's it's a brilliant story i i don't know whether he's making it up completely on his on his own or this this guy who had took the day off uh today um had actually told him this story but it's a brilliant idea for a story whereby you've got a kid high school kid you know gets in a fight uh fbi see him They've got a whole bunch of Navy SEALs and they go after the Black Panthers together all the way. And I love this line. They did that from Myrtle Beach to Savannah. It's just a great, I can, you know, I can just picture it in my head. The Navy SEALs and this high school kid, Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Myrtle Beach is fantastic. I just, all that rough stuff happening in Myrtle Beach. And then all the way down, to, I think they have to go through, through Charlotte or something like that, or Charleston or something. I don't know. I, I can't remember. Charleston. But. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm just picturing the scene there as well. The awful carnage. Hilton Head. <laughs> Hilton Head. <laughs> awful <laughs> carnage up and down the, the coast that's going on. So I mean what a what an amazing, amazing story. And and the cop again, like, does a double take on it. Do, just does it <laughs> what the hell's what the hell's going on here? Uh, and, and and he does say, look, I'm embarrassed to say this. I'm embarrassed to even put this idea forward. But then he goes. Um, yeah, I, I felt that story was a bit off, but he did take the day off today. Like, what a brilliant <laughs> equation. It's a nutty story. Obviously, it's utter nuts, but he did take the day off. So I think you should be looking at him. Just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant logic. Love it. Let's have another. You don't know about the FBI Navy SEAL High School recruiter killer teams? No. Oh. No, it's British. No. Explorers Club. It's everybody, Explorers everybody Club. knows that story in the US. That's like a classic all the way yeah. from, uh, from oh, yeah. Myrtle Beach to. Uh, I, no, because well, last time I was in Myrtle Beach, nobody boarded up. So, uh, well, they, they have British. to sell cookies, I you think, to talk about or something. You know? <laughs> we don't talk yeah. about them. Oh, you're too British. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that was the Girl Scouts. Somebody <laughs> sells cookies. Right. I was in it, but they kicked me out for crying. The eyewitness is you. <laughs> So is there anybody that you can think of that we need to talk to tonight? Is there a name that comes to mind? I mean, I can't tell you anybody that I'm overly suspicious of <coughs> off the top of my head. Okay. You know, um, I mean, this is such a stupid thing. I'm even embarrassed to say it, but it just didn't make any sense i just hired a guy out here mm -hmm. and he really he wasn't cutting the mustard but i hadn't told him this yet paul's been working with him a lot he killed the sunflower seeds in our dove field just recently which is why paul was here doing this he told paul a story the other day about how when he was in high school he got in a fight with some black guys and the FBI undercover team observed him fighting those guys and put him on an undercover team with three Navy SEALs. And that their job was to kill radical Black Panthers. And they did that from Myrtle Beach to Savannah. 
Now, I really don't think this guy, you know, mm -hmm. is probably the person, but that's just so friggin'. Yeah, that's kind of far fetched story. That's weird. But he was off today. Okay. He took his daddy to the doctor. What's his name? CB Rowe. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.